Hello, we family, and welcome to another episode of In the Zone. My name is Parminder Jit Singh, and of course, we would not be here if it wasn't for our mentor, our founder, our chairman, our teacher, our guru, and to all the leaders, our personal life coach, the one and only great man, Datu Sri Vijay Ishwaran. Datu Sri, welcome. Great to have you here. Um, Datu Sri, in business or in life, it's uh, very important who we know. And uh, of course, in network marketing too. So in QNET, we have a culture which is known as power of association, a way of uh, being in the influence of your upline or mentor. So Datu Sri, can you give us some wisdom, some guidance today um, in network marketing? What exactly is this power of association? Is it some, uh, what is it a mentorship? Is it, is it uh, a way of doing business? How can we apply it? How can it make us better networkers? The power of association um, is essentially, comes to my mind, goes back to actually a, a story that I used to say a lot when I was in training, when I was training you guys. President Harry Truman, who came into power for a very short time, right after World War II, when uh, Harry Truman was president of the US. A very quiet and um, humble president, unlike the one we have right now. <laughs> Truman actually uh, was a short, quiet, laid back kind of a person. And he had to take over and one of the most celebrated presidents passed away. President Roosevelt, who was the only president ever to have held three terms in office, passed away in his term. So Harry Truman basically took over the next presidency as well. Now what's interesting about Truman at the time was he had a great deal of responsibility at that time. He had to deal with a world that was torn apart, you know, by war. Countries that were shattered, a lot of decisions that had to be made. And the policies that he put into place till today laid the groundwork for the future of both the, the free world and laid also the, the groundwork for the UN, laid the groundwork for a lot of international policies across the world. What's brilliant about Truman was the fact that he was basically quiet. He was, he was not a grandiose speaker. At one point, a reporter asked him, what makes you such a great president? What would you say? And I liked his answer. Very simply put, he says, I surround myself with people who are more intelligent than I am. It doesn't matter who said it. Like. Historically, it's not relevant. What's relevant is the message. Surrounding yourself with people who are more intelligent than you are means that, in essence, you are always pushing your standards higher. So the power of association boils down to that. Find people who are doing something better than you are in any field of endeavor that is something that you wish to aspire to, find somebody who does it better than you do it, whose standards are higher than yours. And you are, surround yourself with these people, you'll find everything changes. Now, for instance, I mean, you want to learn a language. There's no better way than what they call immersion therapy, which is you want to get, speak French, you have to land there in France or West Africa, you know, Cote d'Ivoire, Gabon, wherever you go, and you have no choice but to speak French to survive. Are you with me? You're surrounded yourself by everybody who speaks French better than you. What happens to your French? Leaps and bounds. 
when I used to live in the Philippines, people were always amazed at my Tagalog. Because no choice. Anybody who tries to take a jeepney in the Philippines without Tagalog knows very fast what the downside can be. And that is the, the methodology of any kind of expertise. So be it language, be it skill sets, be it intelligence, you name the field, find the experts, find the people around that you need to match yourself with. Because if you surround yourselves with, unfortunately, human nature is such, we, on the other hand, try to surround ourselves with people who are a little bit, as we say, you know, in Malaysia, dungu, dodo birds. If they're a little bit more, you know, dumb than you, you love it. You love it because, you know, you preside over the bunch. They're all, you know, one step below you. You love it. Unfortunately, does nothing for you. If at all, you know, have you seen the movie Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> so if at all, you start to retrograde. The power of association is simply about that. You know, the bottom line is birds of a feather flock together. Same thing. Find the people that you wish to aspire to and be in that company. And you will find yourself constantly constantly being challenged. And that's the only way to grow. Are you with me? So in a nutshell, again, monkey see, monkey do. Surround yourself with better monkeys. Are you with me? Thank you very much, Atusri. Um, the second thing is uh, this concept of uh, fake it till you make it. Um, when do we use this? And are there certain occasions where we should tell our downlines not to use it? I think more important is that they understand it. See, fake it till you make it is not about deception. Are you with me? Fake it till you make it is actually an art in humility as opposed to anything else. If you're trying to bluff your way to the top, you will die standing as they say in Malaysia. Right? Bluffing your way to the top is again another nightmare. Because again, you have to keep defending one lie with a hundred lies. Eventually you forget the lies and you start believing your hype, as it were. Which means you start believing the lies that you are spouting. And if you start believing the life that you, are, you yourself are spouting, eventually you will just fall off the edge. What it actually means is, for instance, fake it till you make it, it says to you, you know, like driving. When you don't know how to drive, how do you learn? Your first teachers are, you know, the people you are sitting in the back seat watching your parents drive. You watch and say, what is that? What is this? What is this? And you start asking, gear, clutch, you know, signals, blah, blah, etc. And then eventually, you have to stand behind, uh, sit behind a driving wheel and someone tells you how to drive, right? What else? What are the options are there? You're not a driver yet, but you have to start somewhere. And you must have the courage to start somewhere. And there is a bottom line difference to this. Here, you have to have the courage to basically mimic what anyone else is doing, i.e. in this case, your driving instructor, right? If you don't want to end up in the ditch, you have to learn hard and focus. So the same thing applies to a networker. Now, you want to go up on stage. The first time that, uh, you know, I had to take Mr. Patman up on stage, he wasn't prepared. Are you with me? He was still looking for me after introducing me. <laughs> There's about 60 people in front of him and he was panicking because he couldn't see me. I was already halfway out the building. So, fake it till you make it. He has watched me enough times that I'm confident that he will carry it. 
Are you with me? And if by some chance, you know, he were to, to, to mess it up, then I would come in to close. But the trick that he learns there is there is no mess that he can make that, you know, cannot be solved, cannot be eventually turned around. And once he gets that confidence that he says, okay, anything that I do wrong, I can correct. It's the same like driving, is it not? The important thing in driving is that you recover fast. Are you with me? You could be on the wrong side. I mean, the, the, one of the worst things that happens is when I go from driving on the left to driving on the right. End up in Europe and then take my car out of the, you know, rental uh, place. If there is no traffic on the road, this is the most dangerous thing. If there's traffic on the road, you will follow, you know. But there's no traffic on the road. And you automatically go over to the side that you're comfortable with, usually the wrong side. And unfortunately, my wife is also used to that, so we are both chit-chatting. Suddenly, out of somewhere, a lorry comes banging his horn. At that point, is not the time to freeze. Show way to die. At that time, you react. Immediately, correct yourself. Swing back into action. Are you with me? Likewise, when you go up on stage, correct yourself, improve. So that is the bottom line. So that is the meaning of fake it till you make it, meaning you are not yet, you know, whoever you want to be, whoever your hero or icon or leader is. You're not there yet, but you've got to start somewhere. And if you're going to mimic, mimic the best. And mimicry is the fastest way to learn. Thank you very much, Dr. Sri. Um, I believe we have uh, some questions from the audience. Absolutely. Yeah, so the first is uh, Mr. Paramjit, right there. Okay, hi, good afternoon, Dr. Uh, I have a question. My question is, uh, is the power of association greatly influenced by the environment that I'm in? And uh, at times, uh, there are a lot of people with negative mindsets around me. Now, how does that affect uh, me, you know? And uh, what can I do to change this situation? Change your environment. The power of association simply means you need to change your environment. So in whatever situation you are, if you're surrounded by negativity, that's the first thing that you need to recognize. This is not the place I need to be. Because even try as you can, if you're surrounded by ne uh, negativity, and this happens a lot in the early stages of ne networking because inevitably people who don't know always mistrust. And because of that, you're surrounded by this complete wall. And you can only throw yourself against the wall so many times, you know. So it's very important in the early days, huh? where you can go back to your enclave. You've got to go back to the people that you are constantly meeting, be it once a week or whatever, where you are all of one mind. Are you with me? And to hear each other, to share with each other your episodes, this, that, and the other. This is the fastest way to rebuild confidence. Uh, will the wall of negativity change? Not overnight. But know this. It starts from you. It starts from you. If you allow it and you start from them, then the path will just spiral down. Before you know it, you become like them. But then, you see, you are then shackling yourself. You're putting handcuffs on yourself with every word that they say. Don't let them define you. You need to basically let your actions, your words, define your path. So when you do that, they get defined. And actually, they get refined. Refine them. Don't let them define you. Are you with me? So yes, your environment is critically important. Every once in a while, you need to go back to the watering hole. Go back to your network, go back to your uh, core, you know, enclave and talk to them and rebuild and get your energies charged up and then go back again. Because, you see, ultimately, 
the you are trying to you know go out into the ocean right when you go out into the ocean surviving in the ocean has got very little to do do with the ocean itself the ocean reacts to nature hence it can have storms it can have you know calm placid evenings it can have every variation you can think of how good a salesman you are depends on you make sense so when you go back into the ocean improve yourself and that is the key to the power of association that ultimately the path is within are you with me thank you that was three uh perfect answer to a very important question that makes everyone very nervous you know uh we have another question from mr russell yes hello that was three okay most of the people i want to associate myself are they too busy or just have no time for me what should i do with the situation they usually will be la all right because let's be honest about this the people that you want to associate or learn from are generally going to be the best in the field or better at least than you are right the better they are the busier they are inevitable are you with me so if you ask the people who are with me for the first you know 5 years the first 10 years of building this company most of them who are basically directors today heads of department ceos started off by just carrying a bag and following me because i didn't have the time to sit and have mentoring sessions it happened while i was on the go that means you know they watched me in meetings they followed me they asked me questions in lifts some of the most powerful lessons happened in an elevator because in elevator they got me captured for a while right or a escalator right or a corridor and my and of course they used to refer to the men's room as my office So when I head to the men's room, in between, three or four of them will follow me to the men's room, not for to use the facilities, but to corner me with a question. So you know, always takes me a long time to come out of the men's room, and the discussion continues wherever they can corner me, wherever they can talk, we talk, and and in my own experience, I've done the same. I've done the same with people that I have respected. that i have wanted to follow and i followed them literally like a fly on a wall some of my most important lessons happened because i carried someone's bag into the room i was the official bag carrier but no better no better way than that are you with me to sit in a group of incredibly talented incredibly powerful incredibly intelligent men in argument whether whatever they're doing there is so much learning and suddenly you realize that wow i could have done this better you know i should do this better those are the questions that come into your own mind and um, in short don't expect them you know to stop and lecture it to you it's not going to happen uh number one most of these people who are in that standard are not lecturers that you go to college and most lecturers cannot afford cannot even come close to affording one hour the entire year salary will be one hour what these people will make are you with me many my lecturers used to drive a volkswagen and come to come to class some of them even on a bicycle but these guys the ones that i learned gleaned from they didn't have the time to teach me but it was i who was in the mode of learning thank you dr sri very very practical answer well um we've come to the end of this session Thank you so much for your time. I know you have a very very busy schedule. Thank you for taking time out for us for your caring and sharing. We thank you once again. Full of gratitude to you sir. Thank you Datusri.